So right behind me, this is basically, is the Raptor that everybody has been asking for. The V8 Supercharged Raptor R. And here it is in its fine glory. You got the code orange R emblem right here. Basically, this is the only way you can actually identify a basic EcoBoost Raptor against, well, I wouldn't really say basic, but the Raptor R. The red R's, or code orange, I should say, color. The large bulge, that's exclusive to the Raptor R because it needs that space for the V8. And also right here as well, the side decals. Now, funny thing about these side decals, if you actually get the code orange Raptor R, uh, it's gonna look like it says Raptor. Just something I wanted to talk about because I find that kind of funny. But if we look at this side and we'll quickly walk our way to the other side, it does continue that flip. So it's not like awkward or anything like that. And if you look at the finance detail right here, it just says a bunch of eights, simulating that it is a V8. That's another way you could tell that this is a Raptor R. And you'll find a V right here out of the eights. Now the MSRP price on this Raptor R is around 110,000, but I've seen dealerships marking this thing up over sticker anywhere from 40 to like $50,000 more, especially here in California. So realistically, you're gonna find these in new showrooms floors for around $200,000. And for me personally, I don't think that's worth it, but I do think the MSRP price is the sweet number for this vehicle because I really do love this truck. I own actually a second generation Raptor. Here's a picture of it and a video possibly. I absolutely love that truck. But when I got my hands on the second generation, the third generation, I'm sorry, of that 3.5 twin turbo V6, it handles and performed very similar to my second gen, which is why I didn't really feel like it's worth upgrading to. But this one, on the other hand, the Raptor R, Oh god, it's a thing of beauty, especially with its exhaust modes, as there's four. There's quiet, which really does get a good job closing the valves to make this engine note sound quiet, normal, sport, and Baja. I noticed between sport and Baja, the engine no notes sound almost identical. It's just until you get full throttle on the open road when you can actually hear the verbal difference. But here's just a little sample of the clips. To keep things respectful, unfortunately I did not rev it because I was in the neighborhood, but here's a driving clip of how it sounds like inside the vehicle. It's a good sounding factory exhaust. Now, since we're still talking about power, let's go ahead and get in the vehicle and pop the latch so we can see the engine bay. And here is the supercharger. Now, it doesn't really stick up that much for the bulge. It's just for aesthetics. But here's the supercharger in its fine glory. And it's a 5.2 liter V8 supercharger that puts out 700 horsepower and about 640 pound-feet of torque. It's extremely torquey, can achieve a 0 to 60 time anywhere between 3.5 I've seen, but realistically, you're looking at around 3.9 from other research videos I've been doing research on and articles of people clocking the time. This truck in general weighs around 6,000 pounds. So yes, it's slightly heavier than the regular Raptor, but the cool thing is about this Raptor in particular, it's still 500 pounds lighter than its rival, and that is the TRX. And which is why this Raptor R has been kicking butt whenever you see Raptor R videos racing side by side with the Raptor R and the TRX. 37 inch wheels are standards for the Raptor R, but these are BFG Goodridge tires, same ones I have on my second generation. I personally love these tires because they, they're really good all-terrain tires, especially if you live in a snowy environment as these are snow rated. And the beauty about these tires, or this wheel, I should say, for the Raptor R, is these are beadlock supported or compatible wheels. You can just remove the beauty rings and you can actually install real beadlocks if you like. Now, just like the third generation EcoBoost Raptor, these do have the ridge fog lamps. And the beauty about these is not only do they include the covers, 
So when you're off-roading, you can illuminate the road a bit more. But these are DLT certified. And since they're integrated from factory, they don't take up a switch on the toggles on top as these are controlled with the fog lamps in the headlight control switch. So you have more space for additional accessories if you want to add. And since we're still talking about suspension stuff, these are using it's the same Fox Bell semi-active suspension once again as found on the F-150 Raptor, Bronco Raptor, even Ranger Raptor, but it's more advanced and specifically tuned for the Raptor R ride quality and roll control on or off-road. But with these dampers, these shocks, this allows wheel travel up to 13 inches from the front and 14.1 in the back. And you have the capability to actually set like a save profile too, which I'll go ahead and show you how to do that in a little bit. But just like every practical truck, you do have literally all the creature comforts that a modern F-150 has, including the cool st stepper right here. And your walking stick. You got your measuring tape right here for hunts or tools. And you do have a household outlet converter right there as well as on-demand back bed lights right here you can illuminate and hooks as well as this little clamp holder too right here tailgate is automatic so a simple movement like this could open and close it on demand there also is a button inside the cabinet that you can actually press to drop or raise on demand as well and then of course you also got the key fob that could also do the exact same thing and then a key fob is very similar to actually exactly the same like the second generation raptor as well as the third generation ecoboost raptors it just says raptor remote start and all that good stuff i'm not going to do it because we already know you should already be familiar how that works but you do have these amazing like new uh third generation little air vents on the side as well and the mirrors you can illuminate these on demand and these can actually act like a little flashlight so if you're working outdoors you can actually rotate this and illuminate whatever work side or position you need to illuminate on the floor if you're working on the side not only the driver and passenger side door handles are the smart door handles so you can unlock or lock the vehicle from here and you do have access to the number keypad right here which if you tap these two buttons at all together it'll override the pickup truck so you can actually leave your car's keys inside and enter your pin code right here or launch the ford app and you can unlock your vehicle and have access to your key this way as well again to override the keys from being kept inside it's these two buttons that's a cool little tip and trick right there oh and since this is a supercharged v8 91 octane or more is uh required just something to uh keep in mind as well as the gloss grill which personally i wish they didn't do that's just my thoughts now these headlights are led and they're very advanced as they do actually rotate and pivot to the steering wheel so they're always illuminating your corners as you turn your wheel now there is a tow hitch which this vehicle can actually tow but it's not recommended raptor has a squishy suspension has plenty of power to tow don't get me wrong with the proper suspension setup you could probably be able to tow maybe more than 1200 pounds but the towing capacity rating is 2800 pounds again it can easily tow more with the proper suspension setup so stepping foot inside the raptor Here's the interior. It's all its fine glory. Sorry about the water bottle and the tripod. I'm recording. This is what I'm using to stay hydrated. But the interior is extremely similar to like the third generation EcoBoost Raptor, actually. The only difference is the carbon fiber pattern. You may have noticed it's the pattern is slightly different. But other than that, everything is very similar, very minimum between those two generations or two versions, I should say, of the Eco and the Supercharged V8 version. And of course, you have this awesome capability to let me try on the truck real quick to fold down the shift knob move your bottle and then use this as a table to eat or work with your laptop it does have that but in terms of hardware that's not really much and here's that little automatic tailgate button which is extremely useful especially in situations where you're backing up if i put the truck in reverse right now uh, you notice our backup camera. So if your tailgate's down like this, right, so you can see the camera's literally pointing down, but if I press the tailgate button, I could raise it up if there's nothing in the back and I could quickly see my rear view sight. But if I want to, I have different views as well. 
easy toggle even the bed camera too i can manage my cargo i can add additional cameras if you want to the tow hitch view as well as well as the trailer on the sides you have cameras everywhere that communicate together to give you the best visibility possible and then just like every other ford you do have pro tape trailer assist right here and the screen does allow you to multitask which you have these other pages you can have two pages running at once you can monitor the bed of your pickup truck from this little screen right here as well as your lighting zone which is what you'll be using to like activate these side lights if you're working on like out in the fields and stuff you just turn it on tap the zone or you can eliminate all the corners of this pickup truck and of course you do have your ventilated seats right here for both driver and passenger side and your mode selectors right here which you have a lot of modes to select from everything from like slippery to haul sport normal off-road baja or rock crawling if you don't know what modes or what to shift on the 4x4 you can let the computer do its thing all automatically for you and the screen does allow you to multitask which you have these other pages you can have two pages running at once you can monitor the bed of your pickup truck from this little screen right here as well as your lighting zone which is what you'll be using to like activate these side lights if you're working on like out in the fields and stuff you just turn it on tap the zone or you can eliminate all the corners of this pickup truck you do have a hidden compartment and your standard glove box and then you do have these paddle shifters it's a 10 speed automatic transmission and unlike the ecoboost raptors these gears are actually long and they're actually practical to use in certain situations it's not like a video game where you just tap like constantly all the time so these are actually functional but in terms of buttons layouts on here so this is where you can actually adjust suspension normal sport and baja or off-road i should say and then right here would be a little exhaust notes you could toggle on the man sport is oh, valves open all the way all the time and then normal just your standard of course other controls can be located right here like your lane keep assist distance from front of your car and your adaptive cruise control and this is your r setting so once you press this it will save your mode that you've created and if you long press it will actually save that current mode you so uh, you adjust so right now I just save the valves on sport mode so if i like to customize a r favorite mode to be saved in the near future all i have to do is adjust what i want so we're going to put the exhaust on sport and we're going to adjust the suspension on sport as well steering wheel feedback we're also going to put that in sport mode or off no we can't do off-road unless we're in 4x4 so right there we have our mode saved and press and hold the r button it will save the configuration so now next time when you hop in your truck, you just press R and it will quickly adjust everything all in one single button instead of pressing everything individually. Just like your memory seats, which you do have three right here. None on the passengers, but these does have, this vehicle does have BNOs and they sound really good in my opinion. They have like a lot of speakers right here. I have the number count right there on the screen, I forgot. And the rear window can be adjusted right here. So if you like to open up that third window glass, you can totally do so and adjust it right here as well as your panoramic moonroof, which this truck does have. So the Raptor R literally, for the MSRP price of 110,000, literally is already fully loaded out of the get-go. The only option that you can add is the decals as well as the sunroof. That's about it. But if we look at the back seats right here, you do have this our storage unit. You can, but you can actually collapse this if you want a full flat surface, you could totally do so. Flush like so. And you have additional storage space, perfect for dogs, which I don't recommend because they leave a lot of hair, but you can if you have to. But in the back here, there's never been a concern for like head space. There's plenty of head space right here, including leg room. There's a ton of leg room back here. It never is an issue. And that's with the seat position, how I typically would drive. And you also have heated seats right here, as well as ventilation vents. You do have the capability to have access to a USB-C, as well as a USB-A port and a household outlet to charge like a laptop or something. You do have USB-A and USB-C port right there as well as a wireless charger too, by the way. Cubbies, additional cup holders, cup holders here, more cup holders in this armrest. And the seats themselves, 
do follow the Alcantara design that the front seats have as well. And if there's nobody in your rear passengers, you can actually not fold these down apparently. <laughs> I guess they removed this. Uh, my second gen Raptor still has that. So these, these headrests are actually fixed. Interesting. So with that said, let's go ahead and drive this R and yes, you can actually like cover up this back glass as well or cover it up completely. But yeah, let's go ahead and drive this thing and see how it drives. Oh, and uh, average MPG is, uh, yeah, it's that. Which is not too far apart from the six cylinder. My six cylinder typically averages anywhere between 14 or 13 MPG. So it's not too far off for having more cylinders. All right, so casually driving the Raptor R. Right now I do have it on sport mode now. So I have the valve exhaust wide open and this is a casual 060 and it really does pull. Uh, this transmission also is extremely like more responsive I've noticed from the EcoBoost Raptor. And it's crazy because technically it's the same 10 speed transmission. Just again, the paddles are actually functional on this because I have noticed that the paddles actually hold their gears. So these are much bigger gears actually make the paddle system like enjoyable and usable especially if you're out in the dunes I would imagine. Now you maybe ask yourself well we have a type a Raptor R why aren't we doing off-road and stuff? Unfortunately I don't know anybody who lives around here that has land that will allow me to actually do off-roading and stuff like that so unfortunately this is what we have but at the same time the majority of people who own Raptors are just going to casually be driving them like terrain roads like this. They're not going to be driving every single day like in the dunes or any muddy place. Unless you live in the hills or something like that, that's the only thing I can think of. But practicality, 70% of most Raptors will find themselves daily driven. That's just a hard-earned truth. My Raptors included. I do go off-roading in it pretty aggressively, but probably like three times every four months. That's about it. I'm sure this Raptor will see similar results. But driving it, I have noticed that since there's a lot of extra weight in the front of this truck, uh, making fast turns is less like nimble compared to uh, the EcoBoost Raptors. The EcoBoost Raptor can handle turns a little bit better, I've noticed. This one I have to slow, slow down a little bit more aggressively at times to make certain turns but I feel like it still rides very similar just with the proper exhaust notes yeah this is super satisfying you can easily hear the turbo the turbo the supercharger whine I'm, I apologize that Predator basically GT500 5.2 liter V8 just specifically tuned for the Raptor R is super loud and satisfying listening, especially when you hear the, the supercharger whine. Oh yeah, that is fun. And so, every once in a while you actually hear a backfire as well. But here, just casually driving around these twisty roads, it handles really well. Lane Keep Assist does an excellent job keeping this wide truck in the center in the road does a good job on doing so believe it or not it's actually wider than the Humvee too that's actually something interesting with the Raptors they're actually a little bit wider than the Humvees you know it may not look like it but they can fit in garages at times my home actually fits my Raptor somehow so this one shouldn't have any fitting issues either and just go ahead and conclude that this is a beautiful truck like, I'm not even talking about the TRX or its rivals that it has. This thing is amazing. It's a, it's the ultimate truck, so long as you're not doing truck things. I'll describe owning a Raptor, especially the Raptor R, like an oversized quad. It's an excellent toy hauler when you need it, just not a tower if you have like an Airstream or something. But it's super enjoyable. It's fully loaded and makes the MSRP price reasonable in my opinion. There you guys have it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you'd like to know what the ownership experience is like with the second generation Ford Raptor, sorry to plug, uh, I do that video right over there. That's my personal pickup truck right there. 
and right over there are some tips and tricks that also can apply on the Raptor R, which is quite interesting. Anyways, let me know in the comment section what's your thoughts about the Raptor R. I love it. I may actually buy one in the next two years once price goes down a bit in a used size market, of course. Thanks so much for watching. Take care, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya.